gillies, besh, hornpipe, reel, and shoparinka. While those six words may mean nothing to you, from the ages of 3 to 11, I used them on an everyday basis when I was a competitive Irish dancer. While I competed individually, I gained most of my success as part of a team of eight dancers called an eight band. Being part of that team taught me many things, such as how to be a leader when the team needed it, or when to stay back when the team was in sync, or how to be led by somebody else. There are several levels of competition before you can compete in the World Championships of Irish Dance. This competition is a huge deal. It is basically equivalent to the Olympics of Irish Dance. In 2013, when the World Championships were held in Boston, there were just over 100 teams competing in the U12 age group. There were two teams from my dance school in that category being sent that year. There was an A team and a B team. The A team had the 12-year-old girls who were predicted to win, while the B team was all the 11-year-olds and no one was even sure if they should go. I was on the B team. We worked so hard and even arranged special private practices on our own. When we got to the championships, everyone was on edge. My coaches Liam and Sally were so nervous, as was my team. We stepped out onto the stage and danced, and it, was, and it was one of the scariest, most intense moments of my life, but we thought we did very well. Later that day, when we had calmed down a bit, we checked the boards which had a list of teams that recalled, which meant that we were the, in the top 50% of teams which qualified to dance in the second round. Both A and B teams recalled and danced again. A while later, after the second round, we headed to the main awards ballroom where we had listened to the scores we got from the judges. They started calling out the scores, and all of a sudden, my team was called. The first of the six judges' scores was announced. 100, she said, which was huge because that is the highest possible score from a judge. She then read the, six, the next six judges' scores. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Our team had won the world championships with a perfect score of all 100s. The A team came in second place, which was great for my school as we, had, as we had the first and second place titles. My whole team was jumping up and down in excitement. I can still remember my team huddling together and listening to the scores. And when it came time for the award ceremony, my team was so happy to be passing around a two foot tall trophy with a huge globe on top. I learned many lessons over the years while Irish step dancing. One of those lessons is when given feedback, negative or positive, you need to use it to push yourself forward and get better. My team and I were predicted to go on and win every championship years after. It was so exciting to know that we were the best 12 and under Irish dance team in the world. I was ecstatic to look into the future and hope of more wins to come. Shortly after the championship, in the middle of our success run, I badly injured my right foot. When I went to the doctor, I got the bad news that I couldn't dance anymore. This is one of the hardest things I had ever heard. I was really upset. At first, I thought I couldn't ever do any sports or anything, but the doctor assured me that I could do any other sport besides Irish dance just because of the way I have to use my feet. Getting this injury was really hard for me. I didn't really understand how permanent this was. I just thought I needed to take a break from dance for a while, but that wasn't the case. I could never dance again. I was still pretty upset until I came to Rivers. Because of my commitment to Irish dance, I had never really gone farther than town soccer. Rivers gave me the opportunity to learn new sports like lacrosse and ice hockey, which has also taught me a lot. I learned that it's never too late to start something new like hockey. I am glad I was able to become a part of the Rivers community because you are able to try completely new sports and learn them instead of only sticking to what you know. The transition from dancing almost every day and being part of a world champion team to barely even being able to stand up on skates and playing a sport I had only watched was very hard for me. It took a lot of perseverance to play a new sport like hockey, and while I figured out that hockey wasn't for me, it was the experience of trying something new that really mattered to me. As I've continued to try new things at Rivers, I am constantly reminded of the lessons dance taught me about commitment and sacrifice. Being a solo dancer, and especially a team dancer, I needed to commit to practices, dress fittings, and other local competitions. This meant missing soccer games, tryouts, practices, sleepovers, birthday parties, you name it. I can still remember I was probably in fourth grade and one of my best friends was having a big slumber party, which sounded a lot more fun when I was 10. And I thought I could go, but there was a last minute team practice that I had to commit to. These last minute practices happened a lot. 
I was always a little bummed when I couldn't go to anything because I had dance, but in the end, it was all worth it to be a part of such a great team and to have Irish dance in my life. Team dance also taught me the importance of being on time. Making sure you arrive on time to things is about not letting anybody down, especially a synchronized dance team that can't even start until everyone is there. Irish dance was a huge part of my life, probably even the biggest. While I did learn a lot from dancing, I feel I learned the most from stopping. I learned that stopping dance really wasn't the end of the world for me, and that I just needed to look at the, on the bright side of things. I could still try and do any other sport I wanted to, and that's exactly what I've done here at Rivers. I want to leave you with a quote that I still keep in mind today. When life closes a door, find a window. Thank you.